Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Um, so one of the questions I get asked most often when I stream Stardew Valley is what tips do I have for brand new Stardew Valley streamers? Um, so I thought I would do a little bit of a video with my super basic, non-spoiler, non-telling you how to play the game, just some some things that I think would be very helpful for you to know. So my number one tip though is most definitely play how you want to play. Like enjoy the game, take it slow unless you're not that type of person and then speed it up, totally fine. But you do what you want, you discover the story and the lore as you wish. Um, there is a lot to the game. So really just take your time in exploring and playing how you like to play that's the best thing about stardew valley is there's so much to do and you can do what you want but here is a few of my tips just to get you started because there is a lot to this game there's a lot that i know i am still learning even under after hundreds of hours in the game so it's just a, super, a few basic super basic tips for you for super early brand new beginner players let's get into it Okay, so my first thing that I do when I start a new farm is go into the menu, go into your options, and I like to have always show tool hit location on and hide tool hit location when moving on as well. So that is just, you know, see this little square here just makes it a lot easier. I definitely find when I'm watering my garden, but it just makes it a lot easier to make sure that you are hoeing, chopping, axing watering whatever you want to now when you first load in i have seen a few people think that this is a chest that is not a chest that is a shipping bin you put something in there you're never seeing it again hopefully you got some good money for it um so if you want to build a chest it is 50 woods you can see if, when you load up your menu you go into crafting you can craft a few things already 50 wood, uh, considering you have very little energy and very little inventory space early on. I definitely recommend when you're cleaning up your farm to focus on the wood. Now, one thing when you are cleaning up your farm, try to get rid of as little grass. So like this stuff, not the weeds, get rid of the weeds, um, but the grass, try to get as rid of as little as possible. Most Stardew Valley players won't actually get rid of any of their grass until they have a silo. A silo is relatively easy and cheap for you to get uh, from Robin, but if you get rid of all your grass now, you're gonna have, you're not gonna get anything for it and you're gonna have nothing to feed your animals when you get animals. Whereas if you save it for when you have a silo, you can fill up the silo. It will give you hay when you get rid of it. And you can fill your silo up. That's probably another tip as well. You will get a quest in here that will say build a coop. I definitely recommend building the silo first because otherwise you're going to you're gonna have a hungry chicken. And that's just not fun. That's just not what we want. That's no. No, no. Okay, so another thing is you can go through rubbish bins. Rubbish bins are really, really helpful early game. The problem is you just don't want to be near an NPC when you do it because it will decrease your relationship. Um, as you can see, Evelyn is not impressed. So yeah, you can get food, um, which is really, really helpful, especially if you're going into the mines. So we're going to get anything interesting. You can also get trash. Uh, which is not so helpful, especially if you do not have a recycling machine yet. You can also get a trash can lid hat, which is absolutely amazing. Best hat in the game. Definitely, definitely recommend. I recommend going through as many trash cans as you can early game. They can really, really be beneficial. Uh, just make sure you're not near anyone. I mean... Unless you don't care what they think, and then you can be near people if that is what you please. On this board at Pierre's, we have like the notice board where people can ask you for for things. You can get things, get P 
people things that they've asked for for money um, which is helpful there is also a calendar here which shows you the the month and it shows you everyone's birthday as well uh, you don't have to give them anything on their birthday nothing really special happens on their birthday but if you did want to give them a gift especially one that they like it will increase your friendship significantly getting friendship up in stardew valley with the npcs is really helpful they can give you they'll give you gifts they'll give you recipes obviously you're also going to learn the lore and the story as well okay so in regards to gifts um everyone does have a like dislikes loves gifts everyone is different there are some universal ones but even then it can be different so I don't, I don't think he liked that. No, he. I don't think he liked that at all. Uh, so you can find out what gifts everyone likes or doesn't like through Child and Ever, through the books and like learning the story, or you could just look it up on the Wikipedia, on the wiki page. That is totally, totally fair because that is exactly what I do. Wow, he thought it was a normal gift. Rude. Ungrateful. Totally, totally ungrateful. Okay, one thing to keep an eye on in this game is time. Now, I didn't quite realise how important time was when I first started playing Stardew Valley. Um, so, essentially, you can see it's right here. It is 10.50pm. So, say, though, quite often you'll be in the mines you will not notice what the time is. You need to be in your bed before 2 a.m. It's the rules. Stardew Valley has a bed time. It will give you warnings at 12 a.m. and 1 a.m. to say that it is getting late. A mistake that I constantly make is not remembering to check the time when I am out. So you will see in a second here, it will warn us. It's getting late, it's bright red, um, I'm just going to show you what happens though if you do stay up past 2am. Okay. About to see me pass out, as you can see, she's passed out. That will happen everywhere. Even if you are in your house, you have to be in your bed. Yeah, so if you have passed out the next day, you're going to get this. Uh, I have no idea how much money they took. They didn't seem to take that much money from me last night. But yeah, just something to be aware of. You're going to lose things. Thank you, Linus, for being so, so kind to me. Oh, another thing I forgot to add as well is when you pass out, as you can see, my energy is only half full and I've only watered nine plants this morning so that's just something to be aware of as well you're not going to get a full night's rested sleep you're not going to have your full energy and it's really not ideal early on in the game because you have so little energy already so another thing to think of is when you're planning out what you're going to do for the day because you have so little inventory space yeah, think of what you're going to do for the day and bring the tools that you need. So I use my watering can and I put it straight back. Um, so I always like to have my hoe on me because little spots that you can dig up will pop up everywhere. And it's just super handy to have, especially if you are trying to complete the museum. And we'll talk about the little spots that you can dig up soon. Uh, so if you're going into the mines, obviously you're going to want your pickaxe, but you're probably not going to need your axe or your scythe. If you're going to go to the woods and chop trees, you're not going to need your pickaxe or your son. Like, you know, sort of prioritise. Today we got the, the letter from Willie to say that we can go fishing. So I'm going to actually leave all of that. I'm just going to bring my hoe and then we're going to get our fishing rod in a second. And that way I've got all this space for fish, for forageables. Yeah, on your second day, you will get a letter from Willy where he says he's back and he, you'll have a cutscene and he'll give you a bamboo pole. Fishing in this game, you either love it or you hate it. There's not many people that just don't care about it. Um, people have some strong opinions. 
first tip, if you see bubbles like this, it means you're more likely to get a fish. So I definitely recommend fishing out the bubbles. Um, so yeah, there's this little tutorial. Fishing can be very, very difficult in the game, especially early on. So I'm trying to give you some little tips and tricks. I'm not a huge fishing fan. So there are different fish that obviously have different difficulties. Um, I play on PC, so I'm using my mouse. You can also use your keyboard if you are playing on PC as well. Okay, bubbles are gone. Okay, so when fishing, I like to quickly tap my my left button on my mouse button. I help to find a help it helps control. Especially when coming down. So if you come down normally, like that's how it goes. But if you do little taps, you can slow it down and it won't bounce so much at the bottom. Um, as you as your fishing skill gets better, gets higher, your the little bar that you've got will increase in size. Um, there are different rods as well. So as you can see right here, the bamboo pole is just the pole itself. There are other rods where you can add bait, which makes it easier for you to get your fish. And you can also add like boppers and that kind of stuff that you can buy from Willy when you unlock them, or you can make yourself. They can increase the size of your bar. They can make the bar follow your fish. They can increase your chances of getting treasure. There's lots of super helpful ones that will make it easier as well. Um, if you do go to Willy, you can buy different rods. At the moment, I can only buy the one that I've currently got or the training rod. The training rod can only catch basic fish, but it does make it easier. And if you're brand new and you are struggling with fishing, I recommend maybe trying this out. The best rod in the game is the Iridium rod, which you can also buy from Willy when you unlock it. It's pretty and purple and it... It's just a hell of a lot easier. There are also foods that you can buy or make when you've got the recipes and you've got a kitchen that will increase your fishing. So as you can see here, the trout soup can give you one plus one fishing. It's going to help your fishing out a lot. There, yeah, there are a lot of different recipes with a lot of fishing buffs that can really help you. So, as I said before, I like to always have my hoe on me is for these, these little worms here. You can actually spots to dig up. Um, as you can see here, I got a lost book. It gets added to the library. So if you find a lost book in the, and go to, we'll go have a look at the, in the library. Oh, I've got another one up here. I've got another book. Okay. <laughs> um... The good thing with those worms, you can find clay, you can find stone, you can find coal. You can also find artifacts that you can donate to the museum, which is in the library. Okay, so this is the museum here. So we have found three books already. You open them up. They have little tips, tricks, and just little hints at a story as well. Uh, so they can be very, very helpful. As you can see, use fertilizer, tips on farming on foraging. They can be super super helpful. Right, one thing that I forgot to say when I was here in the museum in the library last time was if you do happen to find a prismatic shard or a dinosaur egg it will when you hover over it it will say you know you can give it to Gunther. Gunther might be able to tell you more about it which is a hint to say that you can donate it. Don't donate your first prismatic shard or dinosaur egg. Don't do it. So if you get a dinosaur egg, you can put that in your incubator when you have upgraded your coop at least once, and you can get a dinosaur, a little baby dinosaur. That will then give you more eggs. It's You can then donate your second dinosaur egg. With your prismatic shard, there are quite a few things that you can do with it. But your first prismatic shard definitely keep because you can get the best sword in the game from it. I don't want to like spoil too much or anything. But keep your first prismatic shard. I promise once you have found your first prismatic shard, you will find a lot of prismatic shards. The first one is always the hardest. Ridiculous, I know. But yeah. 
All right, another thing that I will say I have not mentioned yet is keep an eye on your energy as well. You will get, when it starts to get low, you will get, it will start to shake and you have, will have gotten a warning saying that you're starting to feel exhausted. If you continue, so I really want to chop this tree down. If you continue, you feel sluggish from overexertion. I'll give you this little exhausted and look, look how slow I am walking. Oh my goodness. Not ideal. Alright, one thing that you that you should do every single morning is actually check the TV. So I have been doing it, I've just been sort of waiting for there to be different different options. Every day you will get a weather report which tells you what the weather is going to be for the next day. So it's going to be sunny tomorrow. Uh, the weather sort of... Different fish are available in different weather. So there's fish that you can only get in the rain. Um, if it is raining as well and you don't have sprinklers yet, it's it tells you that it's going to be super helpful because you're not going to have wasted so much energy watering your crops. Uh, and you will also every day get a fortune teller. Now the fortune teller will tell you what your luck is going to be today. So today I do not have good luck. Luck affects quite a lot of things but mainly especially early on you're going to care about luck if you want to go to the mines. So your luck can affect the chance of you getting coal, uh, geodes, gems, stones and ladders, crates from when you go into the mines. So if you go in with a good luck day, you're more likely to find more valuable items and ladders super quickly so you can get further down the mines. It will also affect the amount of gold and items that you lose when you are in the mines if you die. Other non-mining things that luck can affect is the amount of wood dropped from trees, there is a chance to double your number of crops yielded at harvest. So instead of getting maybe one potato, you can get two potatoes, which is amazing. Early game, amazing. It also affects your chance of duck feathers and rabbit's feet from your animals. It affects your chance of treasure chests appearing while fishing and affects what items you get in those chests. It also affects the items that you get when you go through rubbish, uh, the garbage cans, the trash cans. Along with a few other things as well that I don't really want to say because I want to keep it spoiler free. But yeah, mostly if you if you have a really, really good luck day, I'm more likely to go to the mines than if I have a bad luck day. Now, there are two other channels that will come up on only on certain days. So one of them are, is this Living Off the Land. Now, Living Off the Land is really, really good for new players because it will give you tips and tricks. There will also be, on some days, a, another channel that will give you cooking recipes, which when you get, when you upgrade your house and you get a kitchen, you can then cook the cooking recipes. So I recommend checking this every single day, if not just for the weather and the fortune, but also for some extra tips and some recipes as well. So there are a few different places, a different shops that you can go to. Your most used shop will probably be Pierre's here. You can you can upgrade your backpack, which is really, really helpful. But this is also where you will buy seeds. There are different seeds for every season. Um, this You can also buy sugar, wheat, rice, oil, vinegar, and a few other things, saplings. Another thing as well is you can sell back certain things to certain shops. So as you can see, I've got some forageables here. I can sell them back to Pierre if I wanted some money straight away, or if I just wanted to empty my inventory space. A very common thing to do is you can sell your fish at Willy's. So if you're at the beach and you filled up your inventory with fish, you can go straight to Willy and sell all of them so that you don't have to and then you can keep on fishing, if that makes sense. So at Jojo Mart as well, you can buy certain Jojo Mart stuff. You can also buy seeds. Now these are actually more expensive than what you 
would have gotten from Pierre unless you buy the Jojo Mart membership, which is expensive, but it will bring the prices down to Pierre's prices as well. So if you go to Clint's shop, you can buy ores. Um, you can also sell ores, gems, bars back to Clint as well if you if you wanted some extra cash straight away. Now Robin is the local carpenter, so you can upgrade your house and construct farm buildings here. You can also shop, so you can buy wood and stone from Robin. You can buy windows and houseplants and a calendar is super super helpful if you were especially if you're trying to be friends with everyone and remember everyone's birthday. Workbench also super helpful. Telephone really quite helpful so you don't have to go to everyone's um you know if you don't have to come here to fit to find out what you need to upgrade your house you can just call Robin up. You can also receive phone calls which is really really fun to explore if you wanted to explore it. And yeah, there are recipes here as well. You can also buy stuff from the saloon. So you can buy food. Typically we'll have beer, salad, bread, spaghetti, pizza, coffee all the time. There's a few recipes and foods that will interchange as well. So you can buy, you know, you can buy all these recipes if you'd like. And the last shop is Marnie's. So here you can purchase animals if you have barns and coops. You can also buy supplies. So you can buy hay if you run out of hay. You can buy heaters, which is really good in the winter. Keep your animals happy in the winter. And then obviously tools to get animal products. And an ornamental hay bale. Other objects do become available in these shops as you play the game, you level up your skills. Each of these shops have different days and times that they will be open. Uh, Marnie is notorious for never being here. And during the game you will get a cutscene where you know you can enter the community center and it's gonna look very run down and whatnot. You do have the opportunity to do the community center up by giving these cute little genomos. Let's have a little look at these. Amazing, adorable little forest spirits. Oh, run away from me. That's fine. You will get the opportunity to do this up. Although once you unlock the community center, you will also unlock a Jojo Mart membership. Now, common mistake that I do see is people buying the Jojo Mart membership, not realizing that that will commit you to the Jojo Mart run instead of the opportunity to do up the community center. Now, both runs are great. Uh, I've played both of them. They've both got different stories. However, most people who play Stardew Valley sort of want this cozy community feel. They don't want, you know, they want to say F you to giant corporations invading our beautiful little towns. Completely understandable. So one thing to note, if you are doing the community center, once you unlock the actual bundles, you'll notice that there is this little button here that is the community center. You click on it, it will actually show you what you, like the bundles you need without actually going to the community setup, which is really, really helpful. Once I, you unlock more rooms as well, you can cycle between them, which is really, really handy. Another thing that you might not know is if you actually hover over something that you need in the community center, it will start pulsating like that. Pulsating? Pulsing? Okay, during your first week as well, you might have explored up here and realized that there was something blocking this area. Once it does get removed, you can have a look. This will give you access to the mines. So once you go through this cutscene, Marlin will give you a sword. It's a very, very basic sword. Now, what I like to do is bring 50 wood with me to the mines just sometimes and actually make a chest to put here in the mines. I like to keep my sword here. Obviously, this is the main place, especially early on in the game, that I'm actually going to use my sword. It also will be a place that I can put food, because food is very necessary. I can put my axe and my scythe, because I'm not going to need those, just to maximize opportunities.
inventory space, you know? Um, one thing I also should have mentioned when I placed the chest down is you can place chests anywhere around town. You can place anything anywhere around town. If it is in a walkway, like if an NPC walks through it, the item will be destroyed, including chests. So there are plenty of maps on the internet if you, if you Google that will show you sort of the walkways and where it is safe to put things. I actually don't know if I mentioned this before when I was talking about the museum, but to know if there is something that you need to donate that you haven't donated before, you just sort of hover over it and it says Gunther can tell you more about this if you donate it to the museum. That's a very, very easy way before selling things that you can have a look and be like, oh no, I need to give this to the museum. So on every Friday and Sunday, there is a traveling cart that will come to the woods in this little section. She sells things that you won't be able to sell or won't be able to buy or maybe forageables from different seasons and just different kind of things here and there. Um, this is super helpful if you're trying to do the community center and you've missed something or it's like in a different season and just like to get it done and dusted. So yeah, it's every Friday and Sunday. I constantly forget, but she can have some really, really useful things. And my last tip is to make sure that on the last day of every month, which is the 28th, as you can see, we are Sunday 7th, when it is Sunday 28th, make sure you harvest everything. Say you've got full crops of parsnips, make sure you harvest them, your flowers, everything, because starting the next month all of your crops are going to die unless they're a special crop that can grow in multiple seasons but there's not many of those so harvest all of your crops because otherwise they will die and you will have wasted all of your money on the last day of autumn or fall i also want to make sure that my silos are full so all your grass will actually die in winter and no grass will grow, no trees will grow, none of that. So make sure that your silo is full to minimize the amount of hay that you have to buy. So yeah, that is my super, super basic spoiler free or at least hopefully spoiler free tips that I can give a brand new, absolutely beginner stargy player yeah i hope you all enjoyed it it definitely definitely another tip i guess my final tip is do not like don't feel bad if you don't know something and if you want to use the wiki definitely definitely do i am constantly using the wiki every time i play stardew i have the wiki up <laughs> because there is just so much to this game and it's super super helpful but yeah, also if you if you want to watch people stream Stardew Valley or playthroughs, the best way to learn is to actually watch someone. You can pick up on quite a lot of little tips and tricks there as well, as long as you don't mind the possibility of spoilers. Unfortunately, that is a problem. Not to just shameless self-promo, but like I do stream Stardew Valley on Twitch. Uh, in Australian time zones in the evening and night time just in case the link will be in the description below thank you so so much for watching this uh, this video of mine I hope it was helpful at least to some people as I've said this is super beginning basic stuff um, but yeah thank you so much for hanging out I really appreciate it I hope to see you all again soon and yeah thank you so much for being here Bye, everyone.